Thank you so much, Kate. You can move on now if you like, actually. But I'm just going to turn my video off because um, it does distract me when I'm talking, but I will turn it back on uh, as we get to the question and answer session. So thank you, Kate, for that kind introduction. I am a practice development midwife um, in a hospital in the northeast of England and it is a little bit grey today. Uh, my voice is a little bit sore because I was spending the day yesterday cheering for my two children at another grey event, um, this time on the River of Durham, rowing. Um, so apologies if it sounds a little bit um, deep and uh, gravelly. Um, this research um, into optimal birth techniques was part of my dissertation for a master's in global maternal health with the City University of London. Next slide, please, Kate. And the aim of the study was to explore the facilitators and barriers for implementing an optimal birth programme into practice in a state hospital in the Czech Republic. And the objectives of the research was to present any of the relevant literature behind optimal birth, but also Czech maternity history and uh, and how I carried out the research and also to present the findings from that research. Thank you, Kate. So the World Health Organization stated in 2006 that midwives were the foundation to reducing maternal and neonatal mortality. Since then, there has been growing evidence of the extensive impact midwifery has on global maternal and child health. However, there are still systematic barriers at policy funding and education levels contributing to the wide misunderstanding of the role and scope of midwifery, particularly in certain countries. Women and midwives are routinely disempowered by a patriarchal society, often technocratic medical models of care and various socio-cultural, professional and economic barriers. And this appears counterintuitive as Devries et al. in their research argues that the quality of an entire healthcare system can actually be measured via the, via the functionality of their maternity care. Also, over time, we've seen that place of birth for women has migrated from the home setting to a hospital setting in many countries. And the technocratic medicalised approach to birth found in hospital settings is often associated with increased levels of unnecessary intervention and related increases in maternal and perinatal morbidity. Conversely, however, in high income countries, improved maternal and similar perinatal outcomes are seen when women with low risk pregnancies give birth in midwife led settings, making these settings actually safe and cost effective. It's often a biopsychosocial model of care that is observed in these midwife led settings which proposes a return to the normalization and humanization of pregnancy, labor and birth. These midwife led care settings with a focus on optimal birth techniques offer a reconceptualization of pregnancy and provide a salutogenic focus whereby the state of healthiness of a woman can be maintained and enhanced whilst balancing considerations of risk. Next slide, please, Kate. So how do we define optimal birth? Well, Donna defines it as a birth with the least disturbance and intervention possible for a healthy outcome, including both a physically and emotionally healthy mother and a safe baby. Maximising the potential for health and well-being of the mother and her baby is obviously paramount. Whilst interventions are only introduced when necessary and the benefits of those interventions outweigh the risks of not intervening. A review of published papers identified approaches to care which were significant to improve maternal and newborn health 
and they recognised evidence-based care with a rights-based approach, believing that the mother and her baby were interdependent, whilst wholly considering the pregnancy and birth as a healthy state, were specifically important for promoting healthy women and babies. So it's sometimes interesting just to reflect as to whether that is the the birth and um, pregnancy processes that you see in your daily working lives. Next slide, please. So we, before we move on to the history of maternity care in the Czech Republic, I just wanted to highlight the geography of my, where my research was carried out. It was in a, a state hospital in the capital of the Czech Republic in Prague. Next slide, please. So the Czech Republic has belonged to the European Union since 2004 and emerged as an individual state when Czechoslovakia split from Slovakia in 1993, following the Velvet Revolution, ending 40 years of a socialist and communist government. It has historically been a patriarchal country, women having become more autonomous and independent in the society as the rights and freedom of choice of the people have advanced in more recent years. However, women represent less than 25% of all Czech government official positions. The subsequent impact on Czech maternity of this is that it has remained technocratic, hierarchical, quite reliant on technology, and women do not always have their options clearly explained in an informed decision-making process. And this has been shown by research by Stemberer and Begliatel. Midwifery training in the form of a bachelor's degree is in accordance with EU and Czech legislation and it has been available in the Czech Republic since 2003, although attempts to develop a master's programme has been limited. However, the country does lack provision for the education of certain skills, such as home birth, Many practices are still also in use, which are not evidence-based and not in line with EU directives. For example, a lack of midwife-led antenatal care, as this mostly lies with the gynaecologists that exist in the community setting. Finally, the legal responsibility of birth still lies with the obstetrician and not with the midwife in the Czech Republic. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to share with you this timeline of events which led to my research being implemented in Prague. So following the launch of the Another Way initiative during the 2014 ICM conference in Prague, which defined 15 key areas to opening the first birth centre in the country, Czech interest in MLUs has increased over the years and it's been backed by the non-profit group Association for Birth Houses and Centres or APODAC. In collaboration with the Midwifery Unit Network or MUNET, which is an organisation existing to educate and support MLU development as a birth choice for women, the midwifery unit standards for Europe were developed in 2018, followed by a Czech translation as a guide for introducing MLUs into countries um, as a part of their maternity care package. The MUNet also then collaborated with this Czech hospital that I visited to provide training for midwives on optimal birth techniques as part of a wider initiative to develop the first midwife-led unit in Prague. And this led to my research taking place in January of last year, where I visited as they were carrying out some of this optimal birth training. Next slide, please. So a two-day training programme on optimal birth was planned and carried out at a state hospital in Prague 
as part of this wider initiative to develop their first MLU in the city. Topics covered the physiology of birth, what evidence-based practice was, through to some clinical skills and a variety of teaching methods were used throughout the days, including interactive lectures and hands-on workshops, as well as video exploration. Next slide, please. So currently, research carried out on Czech midwives' perceptions of their practice is fairly limited. So this was a qualitative, descriptive, phenomenological approach to explore the perceptions of midwives and those involved in the planning and hosting of this event on optimal birth training, um, to look at the facilitators and barriers for implementing this training into practice. Ethics approval was obtained by my university and the ethics panel of the Prague Hospital. Participant information sheets were provided in English and Czech as part of that ethics approval to ensure that participants had full understanding and consented participation. We did use purpose of sampling to select nine participants who met all of the selection criteria. Next slide, please. So the training was quite well attended. Uh, we had 30 attendees overall for the two days, which included one obstetrician. We had 23 midwives from the main hospital and, um, and some midwives from a neighbouring hospital and a doula attended as well. And we had a presenter and two translators, some technical support and a facilitator there as well. And some of them took part in the interviews. In addition, there was a follow-up two-hour online session on Zoom where 11 midwives attended between the two hospitals. The inclusion criteria were for participants to have attended both days of the training and to be able to conduct an interview in English. English sorry. Next slide, please. So initially, the data collection period was planned to take place between January to March, but it was extended to April of 2023 due to recruitment delays. Data collection was via participation uh, observation during the two-day training and the follow-up Zoom session, and then by semi-structured interviews with participants, and that provided some methodological triangulation. At the outset, we did hope for 15 participants um, as a sample size, as we thought that would achieve data saturation. However, recruitment was hindered a little bit by a language barrier. And despite um, offering a translator to reduce those anxieties, we didn't have any further recruits that volunteered. So in total, we had nine participants altogether. But it was felt um, by myself and my supervisors that data saturation had been reached as no new themes developed over the last two interviews. And interviews did range from about half an hour up to an hour overall. Next slide, please. So interview field notes were taken throughout the two participant observation sessions, the two day training and the Zoom. Um, the interviews were online uh, on Teams in English, and that did allow digital video recording and transcription, although we did have to do quite a lot of amendments um, due to the English um, Czech translation um, and quite accented uh, translation that didn't translate very well on the um, transcription. We then carried out an inductive exploratory approach whereby the transcripts were read and reread and um, keywords and themes were identified. And then we used the Envivo software package to re regroup and group different themes until we'd collected our macro themes um, further down to sub themes. Member checks were also carried out once the, these had been defined 
to ensure that they fully reflected the feelings of those that were interviewed. Next slide, please. So most participants were female, 89% of the participants were female and over three quarters of the participants were over 40 years of age and our most frequent role was midwife. Most participants had also practiced for more than 10 years and over 55% of them had worked in the Czech Republic mainly. Next slide, please. So one of the initial questions that we asked was about the participants' understanding of what optimal birth meant. <clears throat> there was a range of responses, as you can see from some of the participant uh, quotes here. But most participants agreed it represented a good experience for the woman with the outcome of a healthy woman and baby. Many participants also went on to discuss optimal birth being one with no interventions and as natural as possible, whilst others went further to explain it was a birth without unnecessary intervention. Thanks, Kate. So for the remainder of the questions in the semi-structured interviews, six interconnected themes emerged when considering the participants' impression of the facilitators and barriers to implementing this training into practice. So the macro themes, themes and sub-themes are identified as shown in this table. The colour in the sub-theme column denotes whether they thought that the facilitator in green or whether it was a barrier in red and you can see that there's a fairly even distribution across the macro themes. Next slide please. So an underlying macro theme through most of the discussions was the political and societal influences on policies in maternity. This quote in blue from participant four um, showed participants alluded to a reluctance to accept international research, which demonstrates practice and policy in the Czech Republic may need to change and be updated. Although there were some disparities in the care provision based on where women live in the Czech Republic, with some parts of the country demonstrating an emphasis on physiology, whilst others were more heavily reliant on a medical model of care, there was an overriding political influence on the type of care available for women and the lack of clarity of roles in maternity. Some participants felt the political and societal pressures meant it wasn't the right time to pursue changes to models of care. The influence of the political situation is reflected in policies followed by hospitals, the law of the country, and the type of care covered by insurance companies, which then governed what the midwives could and couldn't do. And as you can see from this red quote, all of that impacted how midwives could practice and the types of care that they were actually able to provide. Next slide, please. However, from this quote here in grey, uh, women appear to be using their voices to fuel change and are asking for midwife-led care to be available in the country. Participants did repeatedly identify several organisational barriers relating to the patriarchal hierarchy that exists in many Czech hospitals and most gave real examples of the influence and impact of the obstetric doctor making decisions regarding the care of women and whether they had low or high risk pregnancies rather than the midwife making this decision. The influence of neonatal doctors was also evident in this red quote. A tension clearly exists between the Czech political framework and patriarchal hierarchy constraining the role of the midwife and an increasing desire from women to pursue more physiological birth within midwife-led care. Next slide, please. So then we move on to our second macro theme, which is evolving practices. 
Participant observation highlighted heavy engagement during the practical sessions on the two-day training, discussing biomechanics in labour and birth, water birth, rebozo and aromatherapy. This was reflected in the interviews where participants articulated where they had used these techniques in practice in that blue quote there. Generally, there was an agreement that resources for optimal births, such as Dopplers and birthing balls, were available for the midwives to use. Although one participant did describe the plentiful supply of CTGs compared to the more sparse supply of Dopplers, so there was a bit of contradictory evidence there. Participants also demonstrated an understanding of the importance of respectful maternity care and the art of being with woman. There was, however, from this grey quote, an acknowledgement that midwives lacked knowledge and mostly the possibility of experiencing physiology in action. Next slide, please, Kate. So an element which does facilitate physiology and a midwife to be truly with woman is one-to-one -one care in labour. A substantial barrier shown in red here discussed by a lot of the participants was the shortage of midwives available in the Czech Republic, which meant it was impossible to provide this care. Midwives discussed that often on shift, they were looking after one or two women in labour, as well as some other women in antenatal care as well, uh, sometimes looking after seven or eight women at once. Participants recognised the benefits of using intelligent intermittent auscultation over a continuous CTG for women with low risk care, providing women with that freedom to move around in labour and facilitate the biomechanical techniques they were also keen to utilise. Although these benefits of IIA were described by the participants, a barrier was clear when they discussed removing the admission CTG, which became apparent when they were obviously quite reliant on this, um, as shown by this blue quote. This reliance on using a CTG for low-risk women every two hours in the first stage of labour and then continuously during the second stage of labour was also evident. Another significant barrier shown by the grey quote was the lack of difference in high or low risk care. This appears to be rooted in the belief that technology and medicalisation and benefits in labour should be offered to all women. Overall though, there were many encouraging discussions around the evolving practices of supporting physiology despite the constraints faced with resources. Next slide, please. So the third macro theme uh, we called midwives facing change. Um, this was a little bit demonstrated by the fact that the main attendees at the optimal birth training were midwives. So 97% of the um, attendees were midwives. However, from the interviews, it became apparent that they were instructed to be there by the, the lead obstetrician, um, as this blue quote shows. As the training was delivered in English with Czech translation, this did provide a barrier to learning and some participants feeling like they could be open. Nevertheless, an appreciation of the educational opportunity and a willingness to learn and cooperate with international partners was evident, as shown by this red quote. There was a keenness to share their learning with their colleagues who had not been at the training. And participants mentioned increased opportunities to meet and discuss different cases that they'd been involved in in their working day and with the wider team that they work with on a regular basis. That was really nice to see. Next slide, please. Participants also discussed the lack of midwives in senior leadership and research roles in the country to provide support and education to fellow midwives. The participants felt a facilitator to implementing the training into practice 
would be to have somebody shadow them in practice who could mentor and advise them um, in the moment rather than retrospectively. Participants express the need to work collaboratively to bring about these changes, as demonstrated by this blue quote from participant two. Participants were already aware of the importance of this learning from previous training that they had received, and this was evident at the optimal birth training and through the interviews. They were well versed on some of the techniques and um, opportunities available to them. However, a tension did still exist between this knowledge and the lack of an improvement culture within their service and a fear to take on the autonomous responsibilities of being a midwife. Next slide, please. So one of the main findings was the political, societal and organisational culture which exists in the Czech Republic providing a barrier to midwives being able to act as autonomous professionals within the full scope of the role of the midwife as described by the ICM. The political history of the country and its effects on women and maternity care has been well documented in research. However, this research hopefully elevates the voices and concerns of midwives by demonstrating the negative impact politics has had on their role. In recent Czech history, it's been shown that women have been raising their voices and seeking to become partners in their own care rather than being passive recipients. They have been known to request midwife-led care from the hospitals, for example. However, the constraints of the legal and, and insurance systems does prevent midwives being able to carry out interpartum care to women in their homes, even if they request this. The changes seen by the participants in the support of physiological techniques by the obstetricians they work with does reflect the subversion from the historical hierarchy and obligations of their obstetric profession that has been described by other researchers in favour of listening to the increasing women's voices in support of the midwifery profession that we are seeing. Nevertheless, there was still a predominant voice in this research describing maternity and specifically neonatal care in Czech hospitals as being paternalistic, medicalised, directive and totalitarian which does reflect some of the previous Czech research. Next slide, please, Kate. It was great to see that participants had a good understanding of optimal birth. Midwives were really open to exploring alternative methods to support physiology in pregnancy and labour and really had a thirst for knowledge and evidence around this. In some of the more practical sessions, actually, they were teaching each other rather than the facilitator and the trainer doing some of the teaching. Um, and there was just a buzz in the room as they did this. However, lack of exposure to physiological birth and experience in techniques such as intermittent auscultation, water birth and even abdominal palpation provided a barrier to being able to implement these as standard into practice. The research, of, um, research findings of midwives not being um, allowed to be present at home birth and a lack of clarity between care of women with low or high risk pregnancies mirrored those of other research. Midwives were fearful of the implications of being autonomous practitioners where decision making was needed and expected for safe care of the mother and the baby due to their lack of experience in doing this. Although Czech midwives are now university educated at bachelor's, le bachelor's level, sorry, it became clear from this research, as the published evidence also shows, that many policies and practices were not evidence-based and the legal responsibility of birth lay with the obstetrician and not the midwife. Next slide, please. And lastly, the lack of midwifery researchers, teachers and leaders in the Czech Republic meant that international organisations had to be relied on for further education and training. 
The midwives also clearly articulated frustrations with hospital policy, highlighting the tension of a lack of capacity in resourcing, preventing the implement implementation of training into practice, such as the shortage of midwives to be able to provide one-to-one -one care in labour. However, midwives were open to further training and to have support shadowing them in practice to allow professional discussions and an increase in confidence in decision making as an autonomous practitioner. Research and leadership and management opportunities at all levels for midwives would allow the full potential of the Czech midwife workforce to be re realised. Thanks, Kate. So strengths and limitations of this research. Um, it was good to be able to triangulate results across the observations of the two types of um, training and Zoom observation with the semi-structured interviews that we felt led to robust findings. Whilst using Teams was useful to allow simultaneous recording and transcription, it did perhaps provide a limitation to the participants feeling relaxed and open. Although I did feel that the fact that I was there in person um, for the two days training did allow a relationship to be developed. A language barrier was definitely there. We tried to mitigate this through translation on the training event um, and the interviews, although no participant took up the option for the interviews. Next slide, please, Kate. So in conclusion, Although there have been advancements in Czech maternity care and the professionalism of the role of the midwife with the introduction of the bachelor degree, care of the pregnant woman and the neonate is predominantly patriarchal and medicalised. The Prague hospital that I visited had implemented a midwife-led care pathway for low-risk women, but only from the end of their pregnancy at around 32 weeks and the interpartum period. And that was in response to increased demand from women. Midwives have grown confidence in using biomechanical techniques, rebozo and aromatherapy, to promote physiology and support optimal birth. Barriers identified to being able to implement these techniques that were discussed were the constraints of the policies and the legal framework, unfortunately, that governed maternity care and the role of the obstetrician versus the role of the midwife within this. The shortage of midwives did prevent aspirations of one-to-one -one care in labour being met, and the lack of experience in normal physiological processes um, did prevent the midwives being able to be autonomous practitioners in antenatal care and at home births, for example. So recommendations for Czech practice from this research is for the role and responsibility of the midwife to be clearly defined in line with ICM recommendations and an increased investment is needed in the education of midwives, including to master's level so that a skilled workforce is there to support and train and lead each other. And it would be great if um, the hospitals were able to sorry, update their antenatal, interpartum and postnatal guidelines um, in line with international evidence to allow the midwives to provide the care that they obviously are so um, excited to develop. I think next slide is the, the references um, for my research, which obviously you can look at more detail once this is published on uh, the VIGM YouTube channel. And then I would be happy to take any questions from anybody, if there are any.